is owning a liquor store a good idea? How much money can you make? And why is this liquor store for sale for only $25,000 today on Franchise City? Everybody drinks, right? So owning a liquor store is a good investment. That's what most people think, but it's not that simple. First off, and I'm amazed at how few people actually do this. Ask yourself before you buy any business, what are your goals? Do you want to run this business full time? Do you want to put in a lot of effort into this business and build it up? Are you a good manager? Are you good at numbers and inventory control? Because inventory control is a huge element of a liquor store. Conversely, do you want a passive business where you're not working directly in the business? A liquor store is not a great option in most cases. Is lifestyle important to you? Do you have family members who are going to be involved? What's your long-term exit strategy, your growth strategy? Once you have these questions answered, then you can determine if this particular business fits your goals. And that's the first thing we do here at Franchise City. We get buyers to fill out a goal sheet. Then we can fit the business to the person. If you buy a business that you hate working at or you're not good at operating, you're very likely to fail. So if a liquor store is an option, there are two ways you can start your liquor store. First, you can buy an existing liquor store out there or number two, you can start off on your own. Now, if you're starting off on your own, the first thing you want to do is whether a check if your state is allowing additional liquor licenses in your area. Every state is different. Some states have limits on the number of licenses that are available. So those states are also usually the most expensive for these licenses and can actually cost you tens of thousands of dollars for licensing alone. So for a startup, you're going to check that first. Now, if you do have the money to buy an existing liquor store, you can find stores, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, for $25,000. The cheapest liquor store for sale right now is in Greenville County, South Carolina, cash flow of $13,000. Now, if you think cash flow is profit, you probably shouldn't be investing in a business at all. There are hundreds of liquor stores for sale out there on this site alone. We've got 1,000 and 86 people who are trying to sell their stores. This store is for sale at only 45,000. It has gross sales of $33,000 a month. Now, inexperienced buyers think, wow, I can make $400,000 a year and live like a king. Here's the reality. Keep in mind that gross sales are total revenue. From that, you subtract inventory costs, rent, taxes, employee costs, hydro and water and everything else. At $400,000 a year, what is left over is little to nothing. We're going to look at more at how much you can make and what those margins are a little later on the video. But can you turn around a struggling liquor store, these stores that are being sell, sold for next to nothing? Yes, but you really need to be involved in the business. And we're going to show you what you need to do right now. But don't expect to buy a store for $50,000. Just throw in a manager while you sit at home waiting for the money to roll in because it's not going to happen. You're also going to see most of the listings here indicate cash flow. Cash flow is the flow of cash in and out of a business. It's not the profit. Cash flow can also indicate that the owner is working in the business as their salary is going to be included in that number. So it's not net profit. And these smaller liquor stores are potentially good businesses for owner operation, but just don't provide that volume that allows for an absentee owner and in most cases never will. But how much money can you make owning a liquor store? Now there's no hard and fast rule and your business skill relating to margins, inventory control, all those other things are going to make or break the business. Now if you are in a high volume, economically challenged area, the margins will be smaller than a fine wine store, for example, in Beverly Hills. If you have competition nearby, you're going to have to adjust your margins accordingly. So there's no real set rule to margins. There is a suggested ballpark margin, might be about 40 to 50% on wine, about 20 to 30% on the hard stuff. But remember, these numbers absolutely need to be adjusted to reflect your local market conditions. So if your store makes $1 million a year and your average margin is 25%, which is unrealistically high in most cases after considering costs of goods sold or COGS, 
but you'll have $250,000 left over. Now, that's not bad, right? But don't forget, you've got to take off your rent, say $70,000 a year. That leaves you $180,000. Are you working in the store eight days a week, 24-7? No, you've got to hire a cashier. Just one cashier is going to cost you about $30,000 a year. It's going to leave you with $150,000. If you need another part-time stock person, right? You can't, you can't do all these things just yourself. You're down to about $130,000. Now your utilities, your hydro, your store supplies, your other expenses, easily $30,000 a year extra. You're down to about $100,000 or less, which is about a 10% margin in this case, in our hypothetical store example. Example again, affluent stores in good neighborhoods, you're gonna have higher margins, but you gotta remember your rent is gonna be higher as well. What are some of the threats you have to look for in this industry? Well, it's a mature industry, so competition is fierce out there, including not just your local competition, but an increase of companies like Minibar Delivery and Instacart. Several venture capital companies are out there. They've created e-commerce sites with the ability to purchase right online and get these things delivered to you within an hour. These companies are going to continue to put downward pressure on prices at these local shops. Now, as a small shop owner, you're not getting deals so you're going to have to pay more for your product than the huge corporate shops that are buying 100 cases. You're just not going to get those same prices. So what can you do to turn these struggling liquor stores around? Here's a couple of ideas. So before you even buy that store, monitor your competition. Do it diligently. Any outlet that's selling liquor nearby, you need to see what they're selling, how much they're selling it for, and if you're up against a big chain, you're going to have a hard time because the only way to negotiate better pricing is with these volume purchases and you're not in a position to buy 100 cases of a single brand at a time. And if you drop your margins too low, you may be in a position where you're going to be losing money. If competition is too intense, there might be no way to turn that store around. Now, the next thing you can do is work in that store yourself. A lot of buyers thought they were just going to put a manager in, let that thing run themselves, and that did not work out. So if you can find a store like that, it could be a good deal if you work in the store yourself. Liquor stores, not great options for passive businesses. And one example, are you going to notice if one bottle amongst hundreds goes missing and your employee is pocketing that money? Or if they claim a case of bottles broke when it actually went out the back door. Liquor stores, if they're run well, and if they're owner operated, they can potentially be good money makers, but they're not great for passive ownerships. Next up, check if anybody's providing delivery in the area, if not provided, especially if you're competing with these people locally, you really need to offer something extra to your customers. After that, you need to understand your customer base, managing your inventory. What brands do they like? What do they like best? If you're in a high-end area, you're, want, you're, of course, going to carry more fine wines. If you're in an economically challenged area, you're going to want to stock more low-cost alcohols. Now, if you buy a high-end store, do you personally know enough about these fine wines to help your customers? Or are you going to need to hire a specialist? If you hire a specialist, that's going to cost you more money, but it's going to be critical to selling your product. Now, if you run out of products, you didn't do in inventory control well, you're going to lose money and very likely a customer. They're not going to come back to you. Every single business, not just a liquor store, have a, has a rhythm. And if you're not in tune with your customer needs and the local demand, you're just not going to do well. Now, it's another reason why working in that store, learning that store, getting that rhythm down is important. And finally, market yourself. Most liquor stores out there don't have a website. And it's a great opportunity to turn a business around. Your website, your social media, your online presence can promote uh, specials to your uh, customers, you can have promotions, you can have wine tastings, you can have new product announcements, and just keep your store at top of mind with your customers while finding new ones out there. Marketing, it's a huge skill for any business and any entrepreneur really should have at least a rudimentary understanding of online marketing. And liquor stores in particular, most of them are in the dark ages still. There's no websites out there. So you can uh, get into a local area, build yourself a website, and potentially take over that region. 
Is an ATM business a good idea? I'll put that link above. And Alex Flasinski, he's a liquor store owner in New York. He's got a great channel here on YouTube. I'm going to place that link down below. Please like and subscribe. And thanks very much for watching.